Welcome back, folks. This is the ICT Mentorship Weekend Edition for June 5th, 2021. I appreciate your patience. I know I was a little bit late today getting to you, but our son was in a soccer tournament for the season, and his team won again the championship, so I'm very proud of that. But I had to be there as a dad, so it was all this weekend, so it was multiple games, and we just got home, so I'm now just sitting down to do this. It's going to be brief. Uh, but I'm going to also, before we get into it, mention that the new group, the 2021 group that you're a part of if you just recently joined, that group has now begun the month five content. And once we remove those individuals that don't make their payment by this Wednesday, the 9th of June, once they're removed on Thursday, I'll start including month five level content in the commentaries and in the daily lessons. And it's one of those things where I've been waiting to close the mentorship down so I could start doing more in these discussions instead of just the basic stuff. As I mentioned, in June, we're going to be doing a lot more of the teaching. So I have to remove those individuals that don't make the month five payment before I start getting into those lessons. All right, so we are looking at the dollar index as our daily chart. And you can see that we did see me get it wrong. On Thursday, the market rallied up into the fair value gap, running out this high and this high. If you go back and listen to Wednesday's video, because I have to give you my opinion about what I think is going to happen, I felt confident that we had come back here, which it did. It delivered it nicely. And then it rallied one more time up into here. And I felt that we could potentially see it now make a run below this low here and make an attempt to get down below this old low for the sell side liquidity there. Now, I am not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not upset because these are the days I told you I would be wrong. Now, the lesson in this commentary is specifically dealing with why I push you not to trade on the day before and the day of non-farm payroll, okay? Um, it's going to sound like an oxymoron <laughs> because you've watched me do a short on euro fading a retail trader and called the move in the non-farm payroll. While I didn't execute on non-farm payroll, I had the direction right, but that's not worth mentioning here. If we know, and if you know, when you're likely to get it wrong, that means that your odds are gonna be significantly lower than that of a normal instance where you're trying to trade. Why would you knowingly go into that environment when you've shown yourself over time falling victim to things that aren't necessarily symmetrical? And what do I mean by that? I mentioned that the day before and the day of not from payroll, those are the days that manual intervention come in. And therefore, I tell you not to trade past Wednesday's New York Open on the week of non farm payroll. Because the employment number is one of the heaviest manipulated reports. Because it really means a lot in terms of the direction of the state of economy and the growth or stagnation of a particular country's growth. And while I was wrong on Wednesday's video, uh, sleeping through London, I'm going to teach you how once you see where your weekly bias is off and you have built in an idea that it might do one thing like we were looking for and I was outlining, I was looking for a continuation lower on the dollar. Now there's no trade in the dollar, but we're using it for a barometer. But on Wednesday's trading, I was looking for evidence that it would support a continuation going lower. What changes that? What gave me the inclination to go short on your dollar and fade one of the widely followed Instagrammers on my Telegram channel? I posted that video, which will also be a version of that put on the YouTube channel later tonight with a little bit more YouTube level review, if you will. But for you to understand the mechanics that I'm not going to share there, 
I want you to think about the Thursday and Friday protocol that I put you through every single month that's right before non-farm payroll. Those two days are highly manipulated. So I know I'm most likely going to get it wrong on those days. I can get it right. You've seen me do that. But I'm telling you, as your mentor and as someone that's been doing it for a long time, those are the days I get it wrong more times than I get it right. So that's the reason why I tell you these two particular days of the month, don't worry about them. Because if you try to participate in these days, it can rage against you if you're in a trade. And if you don't want to use a stop loss like some retail traders like to do, it can really put some hurt on you. So to avoid all that, just observe it. And you would have been able to weather any of this and not let it bother you. Now, some of you might see this as, okay, well, we were expecting to go lower and it just screamed up like that. Well, you know where it's reaching for if it starts to rally higher. But what changes the gears in here that sets this up? Because you can see it in the New York session in my recording on my Telegram channel, which will also be a rendition of it on YouTube, which will be, in my opinion, more meaningful. This particular day is just running one more time above the short term high here, here to rebalance all of this again and offset anyone that's short in my opinion that's what i'm thinking so we still have this high low and now we just return back to a deeper optimal trade entry to a deeper premium level to a better overbought condition now here's the caveat to this if we rally higher than friday's high then i'm not right at all about going down here that it's most likely going to make an attempt to get it back up into here to clear up all the buy side there and that i don't know because it's sunday and it's a little past noon time, my local time. So I don't know where we're going to open on Sunday. It's always the, you know, the underlying uncertainty about the weekend commentary. And I'm not going to wait to the last minute and see what the opening is and then try to make all the videos that I have to, have to do to, to do it. It would be up too late in the end of time. But I'm looking for the continuation now lower. But I will go into euro and dollar here that sets the stage and why I was able to go in and fade one of the retail traders that's on Instagram. Here's dollar index hourly chart. Right away, you should see the upsloping potential trend line phantom. I like the idea of it trying to get back above here initially. It doesn't need to, it's better if it doesn't, but I'm looking forward to make an attempt to get down into here. There's sell side liquidity right there. And if we really break lower from there, back below here, this makes it easy run for the sell side resting below here. You can see how the market trades up into that daily fair value gap there, optimal trade entry there, and then strong displacement on the non-farm payroll numbers. 50 minute time frame for the dollar index. Again, you can see fair value gap on the daily. That's the darker lines here. And on Friday, we had a initial Judas swing back down inside the fair value gap, hits it as resistance. This is the premium high of the daily fair value gap. Then it collapses and trades aggressively into this buy side and balance sell side inefficiency, which it trades to here. And then we have the New York session low of the day. Real clear, obvious sell side liquidity pool there. Looks too good to pass up. That's what I think we're going to reach for. So I'll be looking for a trade idea with that premise in mind. All right, Euro dollar. This is our daily chart on Euro. Uh, we had our fair value gap mapped out right here. Uh, while again, I was looking for it to, to move higher off of this Wednesday's close, uh, we had the change of gears and sent it lower. And I'll go into the details as to what set my mind in a different gear as why that was not likely to pan out. And I can also use that to change gears intra-week when your intra-week bias has been proven to you like mine was. I was thinking that last week was going to be a bullish week altogether for Eurodollar and maybe trade above here and then here. 
But this day here on a day, which is the day before non-farm payroll, is one of the days I tell you and been preaching this ever since I came out and started talking specifically about Forex, that those particular days of the month, I'm apt to be wrong. And there's nothing to be fearful of. There's no reason to be fearful of it. Because if you do get it wrong, say you do take a trade and you lose on that day, I'm going to show you how you change gears and get in sync with the marketplace. Now, I'm not suggesting that you do this on the day before and the day of non farm payroll. I'm just stating that as an example of changing gears and shifting your bias intra week from what mine was bullish on euro, bearish on dollar. If something changes that and you get a loss, say you take a loss in London on Thursday, or you miss an opportunity, but you wake up and you see New York is setting up something that would be contrary to your underlying bias or what you thought the weekly bias was going to be like, and it changes it. What do you do? How does it, what does it look like? How does that happen in the chart? What does it resemble? What signatures are there? And that's what I'm going to cover in Euro. But we did trade down into the Fairbank gap, rebalanced it here on Friday. I don't know if we're going to see it rally from here because this is a really nice optimal trade entry with low resistance liquidity run signatures here with the lower high there. I just think that it's possible. And because it's Sunday, I don't know. I'd like to see that and I would want to engage with that. But it has to give me Sunday's trading and Monday, how we set up in uh, London session going into New York on Monday. I'll feel better at that point because I'll have some data in on the chart and we'll measure whether or not this is likely to see it go higher. If we take out Friday's low, then focus here. All right, here's the euro dollar hourly chart. And on Wednesday's discussion, I mentioned watch this because it could trade down into that and set another run up in. And if that occurred, that would set the stage for a potential run back up over here. Notice on this day, we trade down through it on Thursday. So Thursday's trading sees it go right on through the fair value gap. doesn't even respect it at all. Once it does that, and then we see this run here after the market starts to move into the New York session, this rally here takes us right back above the opening price it starts the day here. So this rally higher, that's a Judas swing. Where we don't have any Judas here, it's just straight declines and collapses and wilts into the new trading day. Then we have a later session rally during the New York Open. So during the New York Open, when it rallies this candle higher, returns right back to a bearish order block. I'm not noting it here, but you'll see it when we drop down to the 15 minute time frame. But the fact that we collapsed through the area where we would were looking for a setup to form, or I was potentially expecting something like that, that could have easily offered a buy and send it higher if my bias was correct. But we can't do any trading after Wednesday, New York. So would you be buying there even if it trades down into that? No, you have to observe. So what did it do? It protected you, it protected me, and then when I woke up on Thursday morning ahead of New York, I saw this and then I went into social media because people were prompting me and I saw something that would have been a beautiful opportunity to show what retail thought process is versus what it is I teach you. And I faded a retail view about Euro going higher after what I teach you. And as I'm showing you here had indicated that it's not likely to do that. So this run here is the Judas swing creating the high of the day. And in the recording you'll see on tonight's video on YouTube, you'll see me outline that here and discuss that being a Judas swing. And that's all stuff I taught on free and such. So it's not like I'm giving out mentorship. So don't be alarmed. Then the market aggressively repriced at this run to this low and it took out sell side liquidity there and aggressively ran into this low and then into the fair value gap on the daily chart. Now I draw no distinctions to anything except for this low right here. And then 
maybe this one. But I don't draw any attention to the fair value gap here. Um, I'm mentioning nothing like that also in the YouTube video that I post about that trade. But you know, this is what we had on our daily chart. That's a potential downside draw for liquidity. And it's pulled right into that. Look at the bodies respecting the discount low. We have a little bit of a tail here and here that goes through it. But the bodies are showing you the bulk of the volume is inside that fair value gap. And then it reaccumulates here. Now, because if you look at this day, we have Tuesday high of week where I was looking at potentially seeing this day here because Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, I was thinking that because we made this low here, Wednesday was creating the low of the week. And maybe if we drop back down into this fair value gap there, that could potentially send it higher. And it didn't offer that. So it gives a change in the underlying weekly bias where this forms potentially the weekly high. And we have clear sell side liquidity pools that we get attack if this array fails to support price it fails it, it trades through it and comes back right back into it here this is the judas so ignore that take this line here extend it out in time this little run up into that is another pass inside of this fear value gap so from here to here and back up in that's a short-term premium relative to this high and the low that starts that candle and it goes right back into a premium array so it starts to displace on the downside i said that we would run this low out on 815's data release for the employment numbers and did exactly that completely against the grain of a widely followed retail trader then it continued to go lower attacking that south south liquidity now on friday i shared in my telegram channel because this area here is the fair value gap and this is the target for Tuesday. Once this breaks over here, there's nothing in this that sets up a buy. Not for me, it won't. It should have supported price here, it didn't. And we showed a strong willingness to drop lower. If it's gonna go below here, then it's probably the Tuesday's high of the week and then watch here. But what's below that low? Daily fair value gap, higher time frame. PD array in the form of a discount fair value gap on the daily chart. So the market trades down into that ahead of non-farm payroll. So I'm thinking if that's the case, I'm going to be in this area here anticipating what? A possible rally because of what? TGIF. From high to the low, it could potentially trade back to 20 to 30 percent of that weekly range. So Inside of that idea, we have this short-term high. So that's the reason why I shared on Telegram that I think that, or felt that, non-farm payroll would drop down initially, sweep just below these equal lows, get everybody thinking it's going to go lower, and then ram it right back up into the buy-side liquidity. And I said, ultimately, 2150 was possible. I drew no attention to the side, sell side amounts, buy-side inefficiency. I drew no attention to any of the things I teach you here. All I said was that I felt that it was going to rally up, take out the buy side here, and potentially trade to 21.50. And that would give about a 40 pip, 35 pip range for an opportunity for non-farm payroll. And had it dropped below these lows, I would have bought that in a recording and it took half off here and then took the balance up at 21.50. That's what I intended to do. But it did not drop down below the relative equal lows, which is a classic procedure for non-farm delivery where it's been going down. If there's equal lows, I like to see it run through that. Sometimes it does that, not by much. And then they ram it the other way. So it's like they get it going initially on the the wrong side to get people thinking, okay, it's, it's running. And when it starts to break lower, everybody sells short and then they take it the other direction and then attacking the buy side liquidity here and then obviously rebalancing. But I'm not gonna draw any attention to those levels. I'm gonna do other things from a YouTube level perspective if we start to continue higher 
we have buy sell liquidity there. And if it takes this out, then I'm back to thinking here. But right now, we have to see what we get. 15 minute time frame, euro dollar. Again, you can see that fair value gap is refined into this area here. And here's the order block and the failure at that old fair value gap. Then rally back above and then right back up into there. Rebalancing a sell sign of balance, buy side inefficiency. And if you watch the recording, as I'm entering short in here, I'm going short at the moment that the dollar index, and you see it in the recording, as the dollar index on a 15 minute time frame closes in a buy side of balance, sell side inefficiency. I do not draw any attention to that in the video, but you as my students here know that that is a confirmation. And you can see, looking at the 15 minute time frame, you can see on the 15 minute time frame of the dollar index, how it trades into that buy side of balance, sell side inefficiency. Once it closes it in, that's when I'm triggering my short in your dollar. And then I'm writing it down based on that. So I'm looking at the dollar and I'm looking at the euro at the same time. And if I see what I'm supposed to be seeing, which is we're rebalancing here, I'm going short right then because it's doing the opposite in dollar. It's coming back down into a candle that went you know higher. Where this candle went lower, it's coming back up and rebalancing. So as it's hitting that, I'm drawing no attention to that in the video. But this is right out of the things I teach you here in the mentorship and then run for the sell side liquidity there and down a higher low here before we get to the fair value gap, which makes no uh, appearance in the commentary or the recording that I did on this particular day. Ahead of non-farm payroll, again, we had these relative equal lows. I felt that it could possibly trade down first and then run for the buy side here. And then the mid figure, I just used a simple 2150 level offered opportunity but it just rolled right up into it. So I was right in bias, but it didn't give me an opportunity to enter anything. And that was the only thing I was interested in. And it didn't do anything but that. Just run right from here into the levels that you know you guys are familiar with, but the 2150 level was just aggressively ran to right away. So we'll see if it's accumulating inside that fair value gap on the hourly chart and see if it wants to make an attempt to go higher. We have buy side here, buy side here, and a short-term buy side liquidity pool where it's sitting above there. I don't want to see it come back down into this. It would be better if it doesn't do that. So if it trades down into this, it needs to stay above 50% of this high, this low, consequent encroachment. So we'll just put it out there as 121.35. It needs to stay north of that, okay? Because if it goes below that, then we're back into this, okay? And it's getting too rangy for my liking where we're at so it needs to have some higher time frame movement all right finally moving into british pound versus the dollar daily chart and this one here is just really stuck in a range but if we take out friday's low think right here because we have a high in this low this might be institutional order flow entry drill which would send it from this low to this high optimal trade entry and it would also be institutional order flow entry drill. And it would really upset anything in here that longs in British pound that have been trailed up. They'll run those out on the fund level and taking it inside this fair value gap and leaving it partially open. That's why I don't have the line drawn here. It's not that I forgot. Normally I'd have a line here drawn out and here drawn out. I'm just focusing on the premium high of this fair value gap because it might act as institutional order flow entry drill. If we do not take out Friday's low, I'm looking to see if it has the ability to get back above 42.50 and then that old weekly high here, which I've mentioned in previous discussions. All right, here is the hourly chart on British pound, just a complete range of highs and lows and focusing on old highs, old lows, running just above them or below them and then rebalancing inefficiency. So we have it here just like we had it over here. We have all of this, it rode right on through that, and now we have this imbalance. So I'd like to see it not go lower. I'd like to see it go higher. We have buy sell liquidity here, and the remaining portion on the upside. If it runs here, that could be an area where it could 
be met with another level of selling and if this area is open it might go up to there and then come back down into this area here we're in a ranging market so it makes it really hard you have to be extremely nimble and i'm just tossing that out there because that's something i would be looking for if i was trading it i'm not interested in trading this currency still focusing primarily on euro dollar only all right and here is the 15 minute time frame british pound versus us dollar on Thursday, you can see we had a nice Judas swing here, taking out buy sell liquidity there. And as it does this run, it's doing so at the same time that the dollar index is filling in that 15 minute time frame buy side imbalance sell side efficiency, which triggers a run higher on dollar, which triggers the opposite here. Small little fair value gap there. Look where the bodies go. They close it. Yes, we have little wicks. That's Aaron Price. We don't care about that. The bulk of the volume is in here. So if you're trying to sell short rate in that little pocket of sell side only between this candle's low and this candle's high, that small little area right there, high, low, optimal trade entry, fair value gap, mean threshold, bearish order block. And once it fills that in, at the same time that the dollar index is filling in a buy side and balance sell side efficiency, trades lower. Run to equal lows, attacks that, attacks the sell side here, and then consolidates. Going into Friday, we have London low, just a little bit below that one. And then we have non-farm payroll here. It sends it right back up into this old high and then rejects. So I, again, I'd like to see it stay open in here, leave this imbalance intact. But if it does come back down and be mindful that this order block should keep prices higher. If it doesn't, the sell side below here is the most likely culprit. And that, my friends, is it. Uh, so I covered how things can change intra-week and what that would do for you for, from a bias standpoint. If we want to play devil's advocate for a moment, and if you'll permit me to do so, let's say that you tried to go long on Euro and it stops you out on Thursday. Then later on in New York, it rallies back up and it gives you the opportunity to go short how would you do that? Well, you would do it with 50% less than the leverage you used in your initial trade in London. And you would completely recuperate all of your losses plus more. And you would know why you're doing the reversal of bias because it's showing you an unwillingness to support the discount erase. So therefore, it reverts right back to, okay, now that's probably Tuesday's high on Euro start looking for that lower daily fair value gap to fill. That's it. There, there's no reason to be fearful of a, a losing trade. Sometimes that losing trade, the loss that you pay, that is a premium price paid for more insight, more information. You're not going to be able to do this career without having losses. It's going to happen. You're going to have it wrong. You're going to get it wrong. And sometimes I get it wrong. But even though I'm wrong, it gives me sometimes the opposite perspective, but not all the time. Don't think, okay, every instance, it's always going to be the reversal. No, sometimes it's okay. I'm wrong. Let me just stay on the sidelines the rest of the week. Non-farm payroll and the day before non-farm payroll is highly manipulated. I felt more inclined to do the exercise of shorting Euro on Thursday, just as a, an answer to someone out there parking and saying that they're the king or they know how to trade better than everybody else. And it's a little painful to watch someone go in there and do the opposite of what you call, but you say you're the best. And it does what I say it's going to do, not what they say it should do. Keeping things germane to mentorship and not trying to puff myself up because that's not what this is. The logic behind changing the bias intraweek has to show a root cause of the underlying weekly bias breaking, like I outlined in the euro. If you don't see the discount arrays being supported and it just drops right through it, and you have obvious sell side liquidity pools below you, and you have news coming out later in the day, like it was on 8.15 a.m. on Thursday, that's your employment number, you know they're going to use that 
that news, that, that data to be the driver for volatility to send price down into those sell side liquidity pools. And that's exactly what takes place. And I type it out in the recording. Now, if you're operating on not from payroll week, then you're not taking any trades, you're just studying. So it's important not to take what I'm telling you here and say, okay, well, he just secretly just said, this is how you trade it on the day of or the day before not from payroll. No, never trade those days because you're going to lose more than you'll win on these days. I could have easily had a losing trade there. And had I lost, I would have brought that to you here, not out there. I would have brought it to you and said, okay, this is the reason why I don't trade on Thursday and Friday of nine from payroll week because I'm wrong. And I, this is how I took a loss. There's so many filters that I have built up to keep me on the right side of the marketplace and off of the periods of time where I'm likely to be wrong because I understand how I'm going to be wrong. It's not because I'm avoiding being fallible because I'm human. I'm going to make a mistake. I just know over almost 30 years of specific points where I am pushed out of the opportunity because of manipulation or I read it wrong. One of those two things are occurring, but either way, whose responsibility is it? It's mine and it's going to be yours. So if you don't listen and you fall victim to this, I have to do it. I have to do it. I have to trade these days. Then you're probably going to have losing trades more than you probably would if you just didn't trade at all in those days because there's manual intervention. Sometimes you'll see both sides high and low whipped really bad and then it goes right back in the middle of that new range. Who wins? Nobody. And that's what's happened to me a lot in the past. So, or I just get it wrong with my direction. And to spare myself the aggravation and the potential loss, I just say, I don't care about those two days. And you see now how you can, in a normal week when it's not non farm payroll, if you see your weekly bias break down intra-week, how do you get in sync with that? I just gave you an example of that. And it's not hindsight, I actually executed. So hopefully you got something out of this one. I will touch base with you tomorrow with a daily log entry with a lesson. And then I'll talk with you on midweek review on Wednesday. Be safe.